thanks for staying with us. Less than a year after the Kaduna train attack happened, report has it that the gunmen suspected to be headsmen kidnapped scores of passengers awaiting to board a train from Igweben Edo State to Wari in Delta State, leaving many travelers injured. Now, we're we'll speaking with a guest to help us understand better what is going on. We're trying to get the speaker of the House of Assembly, some, some, some leader in that state, to give us an update on what's going on. But while we're trying to connect with them, we'd like to hear your thoughts on this because this is quite sad, considering mm. the fact that the country just recently um, um, has a similar experience on a train, an active train from Abuja to Kaduna just last year. You can call us on 0812705368709139076948. You can also tweet to us at TVC, can I please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. Um, there are always copycat uh, actions, people mm -hmm. taking advantage of a situation, um, people even masking to be headsmen because you know that's the one that's going to make headlines, you know. If somebody just gets kidnapped without anything like that, um, so this could be anything. And it could be actual headmen. We never, headsmen, we never know. Investigation are still ongoing. What are your thoughts? This, this, this is what happened at the train station. Uh, I know that for the Lagos um, Ibadan train station, as I said, I entered it sometime, and the man had harassed a young, a young lady. And thank God there was a police. There were, in fact, there were three policemen within the train that, we, that were able to... Um, Help the girl, although she, she, was, she felt that the man escaped. But I mean, there was police, there was police presence in the train at the time. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think that um, there's been a laxity on security? And what are your thoughts on this on this recent Edo attack? As we're getting, hoping to get more information from authorities sure. very soon. Okay. Okay. Want to start or so, um, yeah. All of us are the three of us are affiliated to Edo one way or the other, mm. you know. And I feel it's so sad. I, you know, I felt that especially after what happened with the Kaduna and how it took so long before they could fully rescue everyone. I, I can't believe that any train station would not have, it would be like, when you get it, you'd be like, oh, what's going on? Like, you, everybody should feel like, why do we have so much, so much security presence here? Because there's a precedent. Um, we've seen it happen where, and it's sad that I'll be drawing this um, um, correlation We've seen cases where if people say they want to protest and they want to have a protest anywhere around the country right now, the police would show up with such huge force and presence. But the, the, the complaints people have been bringing on social media is we're not seeing that same thing on other areas where there are threats to people, human lives in Nigeria. Let's, I let's feel just clarify that. When they have protests, sometimes yes. it's hijacked by hoodlums. So obviously. Many, so so I, we I, have capacity I have, to show up. I have up. seen protests where they allowed them to go. The last one we had with the answers, there was the people just moved on. They were they were not what well, we did, well a few issues here and there. But the point is that they show up. I'm not trying to defend, I'm trying to make it clear because we are educating Nigerians. I know. Yeah. So that but the way you are saying it is making it look like I'm saying something different. Yeah. What I mean is security presence is very, very visible mm. during protests. Yes. And yet we have security challenges and security threats to every train. Everybody that get, gets on the train right now is going on the train based on the faith that the government is going to protect me. Yeah. Because we all know it's a, it's a threatened place. So we should have just as visible mm. security presence yeah. in all train stations. Absolutely. And I agree with you. So that visibility, mm. we should might, might as well have it in all our schools. We might as well have it in all the bus stops. We might as well have it in all our homes. No, because the truth is that it can, ha it can happen anywhere. So as I'm having that presence at the train station, please, the police should also make sure that every bus stop, because there's something happened in, 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 in Kuruduru Road, and I don't know what happened, that I saw some flames happening. We might as well have that kind of presence across in schools, because our children too are also being threatened, don't you think, Tokwe? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. Um, I feel that there are public, public places are under the jurisdiction of public um, security operatives, and those such places where we know that there will be threats. It's a different thing if we're saying that there is pop, um, universities. Universities can get attacked. But if you hear any wind of protest, my mom said it several times, that when they hear wind of protest within JOS, the moment it happens, security operatives go out. Announcements go out that everybody gets to, to your place. I know for a fact that it's not like they are folding their hands, but this kind of thing happening, that people actually get, the, the kidnappers get away. Not that they caught on the way. Okay, ah. let me come, let me come oh, to my The reason yeah. I was taking on top was because Anytime something happens, we always say, ah, they should have known. They should have put, they should have put, you know. And I feel like it's always that we're so quick to say, oh, you should have done this. But we're thinking, how, if you're a leader, how many, of, how many resources do you deploy across mm. the country? Because 
attacks can happen really anyway. What are your mm. thoughts on this attack? So I feel sad, truly sad that, um, you know, for the families of these victims and groups of families now would be starting their new year wondering where their loved ones are. That's one. <sighs> Secondly, I'm really sad also for my country. I'm sad for, and I feel sad for the present administration, the past administration, that as they work towards the development of our country, that we have saboteurs that, mm. that seem so powerful, mm -hmm. that they, they come and they destroy the work that, you know, that is being put in place. I know how it is easy to blame the government for not putting enough security at train stations, especially since we're still trying to get over one that, you yeah. know? So you would expect that you have more security across maybe train stations. But you're right, um, Mariah, how many of them do we have, really? We have complained about the very low number of police officers that we have in our country. We have complained that some of them, we, we, we have complained that some of our VIPs even have more, you know, that we have more of the police officers attached to our VIPs than they are, you know, on ground for, to, to protect um, regular Nigerian citizens. So these are the issues in our country. And what makes this particular situation so sad is you can see how some of the mistakes we have made, not putting in enough um, funds or resources towards our, our security personnel, not, be able, not able to get as many police officers, train them properly, equip them properly, so that when situations like this happen, it would not take too long for arrests to be made. Mm. Um, these attacks, it's, it's harder to man like the way protests are um, you know, manned because they don't t send you a note to say, we're coming tomorrow. Mm. Or you don't usually hear here and there that there may be a, an attack here. Mm. It's done in such a way that it's supposed to shock the country, you know, shock people, shock the victims, shock military. So you find that, that they are actually just trying to catch up right. to what these um, attackers are doing. So I really am sad. I just hope that when we, when we find these people, we make a, an example of them because they are our enemies. Sometimes when we discuss this, we make it look like maybe it's our government that is the enemy. The government is not doing anything to protect us, but the government is also trying to defend us. I've seen, we have read the, um, since the train attack, what they have done, to, yeah. what they have put so in place. That you won't even think, Edo. Yeah. You think like, so the yeah. north, the, so, the Kaduna to Abuja, mm. we saw all their pirates and all that, but yeah. you see, you won't think, Edo. So yeah, that's another yeah, thing. Yeah, but, that's that's not not yeah, yeah, but you're yeah. supposed to think ahead. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, those, that's, those are the mistakes that we make as a nation. Yes. Because we have not put in the necessary um, funds and we have not, we don't think ahead. Yeah. We find ourselves in situations I'm like this. I'm told the speaker is waiting on the call, but okay. I want to take your own initial thoughts. But let me see if I can no, just get the speaker on. Good morning, sir. We have um, our guest that um, speaker of Edo State House of Assembly retired, Right Honorable Marcus Onobum. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Good to have you on the show this morning. Um, I know you're not a police officer and all that, but we just wanted to get somebody from Edo to speak to us this morning on this matter. Um, do you have any updates so far on the arrests that have been made or um, if there are any investigations ongoing so far uh, since the attack? Well, um, the first news got to us as a root shock at a time when we expected that um, the security situation is uh, coming down across uh, the state. The um, demons were publicly heard. So far, so good. The security agencies, uh, they are on top of the game. I understand that uh, both the Army, police, and the DSS, they are doing their work. They are moving around the forest and all that. So we are expecting that um, uh, in the next um, uh, few hours, or uh, uh, day that uh, there will be something tangible to tell Nigeria. But uh, I want to use this opportunity to completely uh, condemn the attack. And uh, it's one attack uh, that has come to us as a shock. And we expect that um, these characters will be brought to book. Yeah, so, so um, how developed, because somebody, um, an eyewitness was saying that the train station is usually deserted. It's only, the activities only happen there when the train stops there. 
to pick up or drop off uh, passengers and move on. So usually it's an empty, this, um, like an isolated area. How can you confirm this? And how what what did you, can you say the government did to sort of advance or bring activities around there? Okay, uh, you know that um, this train station has been there for a very long time and uh, very recently the federal government established uh, the uh, station for uh, passengers uh, to go through that route. Uh, yes, it's in uh, some kind of remote area. Uh, there are no uh, much presence of um, other activities apart from the train station. Uh, but I think uh, with what has happened now, uh, it, it's an opportunity for government to find a way to uh, beef up security within the train station and as well um, bring up or create other activities uh, that will not make the place like a deserted or an isolated area. Okay, um, Speaker, one thing I know, because I, as I was saying earlier, that we like to point fingers as Nigerians, but the truth is that we don't have any other thing to do. That's the only thing we can do. But can't government adopt technology? Because all over the world, it's impossible to get police at every single place. So it's when you have cameras installed, CCTV. That's how you have an idea what's going on, because those are the eyes and ears government would have, especially in public places. So it's impossible to have to deploy police in every... That's my own perspective. It's almost impossible to deploy police in every corner, because you don't find police every corner when you, when you travel in the world. But at least they, they engage technology to help to know who is moving in, who is moving out, so that if anything happens, they can find the culprit. Do you think it's something your government can begin to employ, or has it been employed already at that train station? Well, uh, uh, that is the trend as of today. Uh, we expect that uh, with uh, the deployment of um, technology, we'll be able to track activities along the train lines across the country. Uh, but you have to understand that this is... Um, uh, an agency of federal government, uh, uh, they lead you that the state can do. But I can assure you that uh, with the security architecture of the state and uh, the way and manner with which the government have tried to police um, the four walls of a dual state, um, these criminals will be caught in no distant time. And that uh, with the um, technology deployed so far that is being used in the state, I'm very sure that they will, they will be closing in on these criminals uh, shortly. But as for the facility uh, at the trade station, I am not too sure that uh, these technologies are there at the moment. But if they are not, I'm sure with what has happened now, uh, it's uh, a cause for concern for the government to do the needful to make sure that uh, these um, uh, trade stations, whether in Edo or every other part of Nigeria, that uh, there is uh, adequate uh, deployment of uh, security gadgets and technological equipment to track every activity that is going on across the country. Okay, so we, um, we also heard that the um, Commissioner for Communication and Orientation has said that there was a victim that was able to escape on the Saturday as well. I don't know if you've heard any more from that and what you can tell us, given you know, how sensitive the um, situation is, what information can you give us based on the escape, escapee? Okay, the information we have gotten, because that's part of my constituency as well, is that uh, there are some children that, um, there's a little girl that was able to make her way back and uh, a few other uh, children that were left uh, after the incident. So that's all I know for now. I don't know about any other SKP from the um, kidnappers um, there. Okay. We'll have to let you go now, but we thank you. Any other questions for you? Mm. I think um, we'll allow you to go right now, but we'll definitely keep our tabs on Edo State to know, to have, get any follow-up from the government on this. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us this morning. All right, thank you for your time. God bless you all. What are your thoughts on this? Yes, I, I, I didn't want to. There was no point I asking him the question I would have asked because he wouldn't have been able to answer. But the truth is, kidnapping is not... Kidnapping happens. You know, we've spoken to a lot of uh, our politicians and they make it look like uh, security has really improved. You've not been hearing. Like, people don't talk about it. We, a few of them get to the papers, but kidnapping still takes place, especially even within a Edo state. Um, there was a time just within the last, last quarter of last year 
that my husband and his siblings had to go for a burial in Ewoimi. And on their way back, it was just, thank God, because there was a car left bullet reading in front of them. There was no, um, like, physical, there was no other person there. So they, it felt like kidnappers came in, carried those people away. So we, these things happen on a regular basis. We cannot make it look like, oh, we're shocked by it. We're not shocked. Every, we know we can except we're trying to ignore the fact that there's insecurity in the country. We know there's insecurity. We're just we only pray that we escape, that it does mm. not happen to us, or that when it happens, we only hear of the story. Or like we know. And there is there's a conversation of making it look like because it, things are not as gruesome as probably what we were hearing back then, things have really, really reduced. But they still happen randomly. And those random ones we don't want anybody to be collateral damage. Like in the case of what we had with um, um, the former governor who, came, who, who lost police officers, Amaram said a point that was very, is very valid. Till today, a lot of our VIPs have two, one to two police officers protecting them in their cars with AK-47 that is not bought by them. The uh, VIPs, um, police officers have AK-47. These are um, tools that are bought by the po police to protect Nigerians, but are now used by few people. Mm. And we are now complaining we don't have enough men on ground to pursue criminals when it happens. Well, we don't have enough men, really, because we, we have less than 500,000 police officers. That one is the fact. Well, we are mismanaging what we have. So the one we have, obviously, we are mismanaging. <laughs> but the point is that how can we employ advanced technology to support ordinary E, so ordinary the toll gate? It's the new station internationally where they would tell us, okay, trucks came to shoot at some point. So something must give us information. Something must be able to help because no, there's no way you can deploy 500,000 policemen across to, to, to guard 500 million and 200 million Nigerians. It's impossible. So we need some. Do you have any comments on social media I want to take? Okay, I thought Nima was going to give her. Okay, yeah, I wanted to say that, you know, I've always, traveling the um, Lagos Ibadan on train, I've always felt that, you know, people living a lot around the train stations where, you know, not necessary that somebody should make sure that they don't build around the tracks. But now I'm seeing different because the state of the ones in, in our inner other states besides Lagos is why, you know, attacking them will be easy. easy. Good. The Edo case is a case in study itself. What happened is that that area, when activities come, there are only a few people, traders and you know, those, you know, using the train that are there at part time. Yeah. Mm, There's yeah. no development whatsoever around the tracks. Yeah. The same thing happened in the Kaduna, uh, Abuja one. Mm. The place where the attack happened was completely isolated yeah. from reality. And so if we can find a way, the way we have railway crossings and people developments around mm. them in Lagos particularly, if we can have that in the inner mm. states, it would be extremely important. Also, just as Stockman said, Edo State has to sit up on security. In my state, in my own community, kidnapping that used to be something that, you know, was on head of, became normal. People go to farms and they don't come back. People, things are happening. Towards the um, end of last year, um, churches were attacked. People were killed in their farms. And the those states will just go on uh, business as usual. We are not hearing them. I wanted to speak, go to the speaker before you ended the question that what is the government's position on security? Hmm. But it's not the speaker we should be talking to. The, the call governor, is that of the, the governor in that state. Kidnapping is normal in the Edo. Mm. In the days of uh, Moshe Mole, I would like to say here, this is not about partisanship. There was a situation that was happening on the Bini or a road so yeah. frequently. He had to sit up. He did something about it for it to reduce. People traveling then had issues on the bad roads. He t dealt with the, that, that was within the state. You can't continue to say this thing is a federal thing and you just isolate as if these are not your people. Mm. These are your people and you can't, you, you people cannot have a feel, free field day in Edo and you say it's not, Edo is too big. Secure the state. It's not that hard. Mm. Secure the state. Do what you need to do. Let's sit, you, see you sit up on it, please, Mr. Mm. Governor. Okay, I mm. think that's all we can take okay. on this unless we have anything on social media. Uh, we have to wrap up on this, but we'll continue to wait for, for a few developments. You have more? No, just a few people it's feel right. it's quite shocking to them, you know, it's like right. what is happening in Nigeria. <laughs> uh, wow, what's really happening in this country? Does that mean security and surveillance, federal government promises to put in place are all scam? Or it's only for a particular area. This country okay. cannot be trusted. I, I'm, I'm an optimist, and I, mm. and I really am one of those Nigerians that actually believe Nigeria. So I do I, I, when things like this happen, I'm just one of those people that want to see what the government is doing first. What have they done? Yes, they made some efforts in certain areas, but the truth is, as we said, the state governors must take more responsibility. 
there's, it's, it realistically, it's almost impossible to have to be able to man everything because yeah, today is train station. Tomorrow it can be somebody's school. Uh -uh. Tomorrow it can be somebody's bus stop. Tomorrow it can be somebody's. Uh, they can be in the mall. These are all public Nigerians places. Nigerians are now so, being ransomed by so, themselves and helping. Exactly. You so, can't leave your people to self help. So the point What's is the that point there's much more than just deploying security. There's got to be much more solution to that. It's, a, it's more about us Economy. taking responsibility. Those who are also taking advantage of headsmen labeling so, oh mm. and the heads may well good you can't keep doing that so mm. people right. are just taking advantage of kidnapping and attacking kidnapping yeah. people so we not also need to find a way just like i think it was i was saying that mm. once you fight you're going to go multi-layered uh, um, approach yeah. where it's getting the, co the community leaders mm -hmm. getting the orbas getting the people involved mm. let us find ways to secure ourselves also as the government also doing what they can to mm. secure us well we start we shall continue to find out from Edo state to find out get an update in the police what's been done hopefully these people will be found very soon.